here's the train we should be travelling on, on a tour of Karen's little railway. Selecting forwards gear and panning up, we can see on our left the siding leading to the engine shed and on our right the other side of the passing loop from where we are starting. The points beyond the small bar of crossing you can see are set to send us round to the left. And so to start with we will be following the same route as in our earlier video which described the basic oval route as originally built. As we head towards the cutting the curved points soon become visible. We will be taking the right hand track leading away from the original line and onto what has become known as the Ladybird line which rejoins the original route at the pair of points we've just passed on the left. We soon find ourselves on a low embankment and travel around a sharp curve towards the truss bridge. Over the bridge we follow the right hand branch, curving more gently to cross the original line at the diamond crossing. Now we start climbing a fairly stiff gradient and from just beyond this crossing up to the summit of the line is where we intend building a living tunnel. As we pass the summit we must control our speed down the gradient in the sunny area favoured by the ladybirds that gave rise to the naming of this part of the railway. Clattering across the points we rejoin the original oval. Here the curves are relatively gentle and the track is uninterrupted by points and crossings so we can speed over the original bridge and around the back of the pond. Time to slow down now in order to cross the points that send us into the right hand side of the passing loop, travelling alongside the line in which we started. Since I'm operating the railway on my own today, I'll have to pause here to change a couple of pairs of points. Rather than following the same route for another lap, we will be sent towards the truss bridge. Traversing this short section of track effectively allows us to change our direction of travel so that we'll now cross the bridge in the opposite direction to which we did previously and continue round the sharp approximately 16 foot radius curve which gradually gets less steep and eventually straightens out briefly before we carry on curving round to the left entering the cutting in the opposite direction to before. Crossing the curved points we rejoin the original circuit Coming out of the cutting, we head back up towards the diamond crossing. We'll slow down here in order to come to a stop for the next pair of points. This pair are operated in the simplest possible manner. Ducks permitting, we'll slowly cross several pairs of points to take us back to the point where we started from, but now facing in the opposite direction. Although we've now travelled all the tracks on Karen's little railway, except the siding up to the engine shed, we'll carry on round for a complete circuit in the opposite direction and try and mention some of the civil engineering features as we go. Either side of the original bridge, which is described in an earlier video, you can see the ground level is quite a bit higher than the surrounding fields. A dry stone retaining wall had to be built along the boundary because we designed the original route to be fairly level. We had plenty of stones available from the excavations of the pond. Later, when we built this ladybird line extension, we introduced some gradients by simply following the lay of the land, which made the track more interesting for driving. We'll coast down the hill, across a couple of our wooden access crossings, towards the diamond crossing, where we'll pause the film for a moment. You can see it is built where two curved tracks cross each other, which made it more complex to construct than if the tracks were both straight, as is more usual for such crossings. Carrying on around the curve, we soon reach the truss bridge, where we'll pause the film again. In this side view you can see the triangular trusses, which make a strong structure, allowing us to have a shallower deck than would have been possible with a simple beam bridge. After extensive and vigorous testing, plus a few coats of red oxide paint, tracks could be laid across the Caron Bridge or Viaduct. Hearing the wheel flanges squealing as we round this sharp curve, 
reminds me to mention that we use up to three millimeters of gauge widening on curves. The earthworks, such as this cutting, may not seem spectacular, but the amount of stones moved whilst forming the track bed seemed disproportionately large. Some were later reused in the building of our O-gauge Greendale and Brownhill Railway. As we head out of the cutting, one of several wooden crossings comes into view. Several of these have been built to allow easy access, including wheelbarrows and wheelchairs, to various parts of the garden. Slowing down to clatter across the last few pairs of points, we shall come to a halt facing the pit which will one day become a turntable. Now a double-ended locomotive won't need turning, it can just run round its train and repeat the whole journey. How we do this without having to change any points will be the subject of the next video.